Since 2001, LaGrange College has been the only college in Georgia to offer a JAN term, four weeks of special interest courses, many of which feature overseas travel. LaGrange College supports its JAN term travel courses through a unique financial aid program called the Study Away Commitment. First year freshmen are provided a voucher worth up to $2,500 for an off-campus travel experience their junior or senior year. For more information, ask your LaGrange College admissions counselor for a copy of the Study Away Passport brochure. On Saturday, May 18th, under rainy skies, LaGrange College held its 2013 graduation ceremony. No spell of bad weather, however, could dampen the pageantry and tradition of this colorful event. In spite of the recent decline in American jobs, nearly 70% of LaGrange College graduates already had accepted employment or a graduate school offer by the time they crossed the commencement platform on May 18th, including Christopher Appel, who had been accepted into the prestigious Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts of Southern Denmark. Hannah Lancaster, now employed as a registered nurse at West Georgia Health in LaGrange. Amy Peake, accepted into the Master of Divinity in Biblical Counseling program at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Henry Jacobs, on staff at Chattahoochee Riverkeeper, a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting lakes, tributaries, fish, and wildlife. Hill Daniel, 2012 student government president, who is now employed as a felony drug court case manager with Troop County Court Services. And Devin James, who has been accepted into the Master of Science in Biology degree program at Valdosta State University. More than ever, LaGrange College is attracting young men and women who want to be both challenged and inspired. Meet several of our graduates and see where their time at LaGrange College is taking them on this edition of LaGrange College Presents. LaGrange College Presents. When the LaGrange College graduating class of 2013 first arrived on campus, they had already witnessed the start of what would become a financial crisis in America. They had seen older brothers and sisters graduate into a dismal job market, and they prepared themselves for the brutal job market ahead. How? By networking for jobs whenever possible. By choosing successful LaGrange College alumni as mentors by attending job fairs, taking advantage of on-campus career counseling, and pursuing summer internships that could lead to permanent jobs. Taylor Baldwin is a good example of someone who saw the job crisis coming and took action. As a senior in high school, she began taking basic college courses at a nearby state school. Once her core curriculum was out of the way, she looked for a college with strong programs in math and computer science and a women's soccer team. I don't think I've ever been undecided. Like, I've always had something coming, and I guess as weird as it sounds, it's always, it's always worked out for me. Like, what I've decided has always worked out. I didn't, I mean, I didn't, when I thought I decided I wanted to come to LaGrange, I didn't apply anywhere else. Like, I didn't, uh, I didn't think, oh, I'm not going to get in there and not go. I guess I just wanted to go there, and that's what I was set on, and that's what happened. My name's Taylor Baldwin. I'm from Woodstock, Georgia. So I have five siblings, so we're all kind of independent and we, we're very driven to get things done ourselves, ourselves because it's just my mom and five of us basically, and so she doesn't have the time to do a lot of things for us, so we try to do it ourselves, and I guess that's why I, I am where I am, you know. I was looking for somewhere to play soccer and, you know, came on a recruitment visit and just, I fell in love. I mean, the campus is so beautiful and the people were really friendly. I had taken classes at Kennesaw State and I was like, I mean, the teachers, I'm pretty sure a lot of them, I had no way of even knowing how to contact them outside of class. 
and they just came, you know, lectured, you were gone, you came back. I didn't have homework. I didn't. It was the tests, and class were anywhere from about 40 to 90, all my classes were, so. It was definitely a different experience. I love how here you have, like, that close relationship with the teachers, you know, your friends, or, like, people that you keep seeing in the same classes I would run over, so. Taylor and Bob. Then I applied and I got into Georgia Tech for quantitative psychology. Basically, what you're trying to do is is research. You're you're looking at you're looking at everything so that you can make a model for it almost, so that you can predict when something's going to happen, what's going to happen, and maybe a company can advertise better or produce certain products in certain seasons and stuff. I mean, anything, anything you could come up with. It could not only like give you something new to see, but you could find a correlation, you could find a connection that helps you predict something. This is all to me, like when I sat down my, what, sec second year here, first year, sophomore year, yeah, I, was, I sat down and I had chose this path for myself. And it's, it's crazy to me that it like came true, you know, I said, you know, oh, Georgia Tech, you know, that sounds great. And I mean, it came true and I'm excited about that, but it also is a little nerve-wracking that I'm, you know, moving into Atlanta. I'm gonna be on my own. Joanna Meyer has been accepted into the master's degree in journalism and mass communication program at the University of South Carolina. As a drama major at LaGrange College, Joanna enjoyed acting but didn't limit herself to a single role in the theater department. I think I first started doing theater, probably seven or eight at some summer camp, and it always been a fun summer memory. I realized in high school I could actually volunteer at the summer camp near my house, and also on Saturday workshops and sort of have a teaching role. And then ever since then I realized this hobby can become your life, it doesn't have to be a hobby. I've had friends who are theater majors at other schools who didn't get a single part to their senior year and if you're not cast in the show then you're not in the show at all. You show up for your classes and that's it. But that is another great thing about the department. You are always involved in the show. If you're not cast you will have some fantastic tech job that you are here and you learn all about the show. I have been the assistant to props my freshman year. Um, I've been props mistress for Dames at Sea stage managed The Maids and Sweeney Todd. I'm currently stage managing this show right now, The 39 Steps. A stage manager is in charge of recording all the blocking that gets put down by the director and different choices the actors make during the rehearsal process. Also, the stage manager is on headset in the booth for the run of the show, calling every light and sound cue that happens, curtain up, curtain down. They check props before the show begins. They tell the actors when it is time to go on stage, when they need to be ready, and basically, manage the entire situation and keep rehearsals running smoothly. The different stage managing jobs that I've had have forced me to learn time management and organization and you can apply that to any area of subject that you decide to study later in life. Also verbal presentation a lot of times if I'm a little antsy about a presentation in class I'm like okay just pretend it's a monologue you know and then I get up there and I'm able to just hopefully breeze through it. Tom Sheck, God bless him, got me over my fear of heights, actually taught me how to operate machinery, um, which is a definite skill I'm going to need when I move away, away, away. Um, Professor Petit has hopefully taught me some element of style that I may have lacked as a freshman, um, and really taught me the history of costumes and how they've changed, and I'm particularly fascinated by that. And Riggs, again, you know, with the acting, teaching me how to really get into a character and take a real-life situation and then make it humorous. I'm hoping to go for advertising and public relations and ideally right now I'm torn between writing the scripts for commercials and directing commercials and also working in the advertising and public relations department of a big theater. Austin Burns is heading for Boston where he's been accepted into the New England Conservatory of Music. There he'll seek a master's degree in vocal performance. Austin, a musical jack of all trades, is pleased with the many diverse opportunities he was given here at LaGrange. I want to do Broadway, I want to do pop, I want to do um, classical singing, uh, jazz, I, it's just all of it 
people think of them all as, as being so far separated, but as you study music, you see the lines are a lot more blurred um, than you think they are. My name is uh, Austin Burns. I'm from Conyers, Covington, that area. I'm a double major here, uh, both in composition and in vocal performance. I did a lot of plays and musicals in high school. And, uh, and when I came in, you know, I, I really wanted to, to be a composer. But, you know, I learned as, as I've been here that I'm, I'm more of a singer. And, um, and I've been learning to accept my strengths and, and to play on them. I feel like I didn't seek out necessarily all the things that I ended up being in. You know, sometimes teachers just got me and said, okay, you're going to be in this. And, um, you know, I just kind of held on for dear life and tried it the best that I could. And uh, my freshman year, I was in Brigadoon. My sophomore year, we did Hansel and Gretel and I was the witch. It was an opera jam term. So it was it was really um, funny and, and I've never dressed like a woman before, so that was definitely something different. And uh, I remember I had to, to wear this wig and one of their performances, the wig kept uh, falling off. And when I got finished, this little kid came up to me and said, your wig almost fell off. My junior year, I was in Dames at Sea. I was the captain, but I was also in Sweeney Todd. Uh, different roles are fun for different reasons. I did enjoy uh, doing Sweeney Todd because uh, Pirelli had uh, a lot of falsetto uh, passages and, uh, and I really enjoy doing that. Some people, you know, get adrenaline rushes by, you know, jumping out of airplanes and doing that stuff. I get it from performing, you know, from being on the stage. I get such a high from that and um, it just makes me happy. Meldra Hall has been accepted into the doctoral degree program at the prestigious Morehouse School of Medicine. Meldra is a good example of how internships, arranged through the Career Counseling Office at LaGrange College, benefit talented students. I did an internship with a cardiologist this Jan term, and it was the best experience I've had so far. It was at Southern Cardio with Dr. Robert Copeland, and I shadowed him and went from patient to patient with him. I learned that being a physician requires understanding what exactly is wrong with the patient, not necessarily ordering a lot of drugs and saying, here, let's see if this works or let's fix this. And so I had, he took a lot of time explaining what was wrong and trying to figure out exactly the symptoms and what was happening so he could have the best diagnosis and it kind of opened my eyes to what it really takes to be a physician and he connected to patients also he made sure to get on that personal level with them and I really was inspired by that. I followed him from patient to patient I got to see different diseases from pectus where um, it's more common in males where the stomach kind of dents in, and he said in severe cases, um, it's so, like the space in between the front and the spine is so small that you could feel the heartbeat of the patient, and that just blew my mind. I was very amazed. I was like, oh my goodness. There was another disease that I came encounter with, um, Factor V Leiden, where you, all right, it's in your genes. You're genetically made up to have blood clotting. And so you would have to take medicine to undo the blood clots in your genes. And it's something that you're born with. And a lot of times patients don't even know that they have it until like later on in their life. Um, this one lady needed, um, had miscarriages and they didn't know why and they found out that it was because of a genetic disease. I love knowing the chemical processes going on, just breathing, just sitting here, all the processes that allow you to see light, the electrical impulses that allow you to feel things. Um, I love knowing that and knowing that I could help people. Um, there's so many things that could go wrong and that do go wrong. And so just being a part of helping people or increase the quality of life um, draws my passion or is my passion. Kia Britton is headed south to the University of West Florida. Her ambition? 
to become an OBGYN and open a clinic in the developing nations of Africa, Asia, or Latin America. Um, I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and um, throughout my childhood we moved across the United States because of my father's job. Um, when I was in about ninth grade, we moved to the Bahamas, and I went to international school in Bahamas from ninth and tenth grade. Um, I've been playing basketball since I was in about third grade. I actually did ballet for most of my life, and then my dad wanted me to take a completely other route, and I tried basketball, and I haven't stopped ever since. Ballet, I guess, did help with like agility and balance and things like that, so yeah, but it wasn't for me in the end. <laughs> Our team chemistry has just really changed throughout the years because like I said, when I first came my freshman year, we had a huge freshman class. There was 12 of us and so we were young dominated and so basically we kind of looked to the older kids to set the tone and it's just completely changed because we have people leave and people come and team chemistry is something that we need off the court and on the court in order to have such successful seasons. And I think since I've been here, our focus has always been on team chemistry. Um, my goal is to go to medical school and to be a medical missionary. I feel like I've always had a passion to help other people, and living in the Bahamas really made me be aware of third world countries and those that are less fortunate. And um, I've always really wanted to, to deliver babies, which is why I want to be an OBGYN in some sort of third world country. I actually want to have my own private practice in the United States. One of my friend's dads, he actually does this. He has his own private practice and um, every other summer he'll take off the whole entire summer to go to a third world country and usually he'll go there or I'd like to go there and set up a makeshift, I guess, doctor's office or a clinic. And my, the reward for me would just to be able to help those that are completely less fortunate than I am and to be able to aid them in having healthy babies and living a healthy life through, you know, my services. While many of his fellow graduates have ambitions of serving the greater good in foreign lands, Knox Robinson has chosen to impact the lives of young people right here in the Peach State. He's taken a position as a teacher and coach at Washington Wilkes Comprehensive High School in Washington, Georgia. My name is Knox Robinson. I'm from Darien, Georgia. I played football here for three years. I just came off the CHIP program in Washington, D.C. for this fall semester. The CHIP program is the Capitol Hill Internship Program. It's done through the United Methodist Churches Washington Consortium, which is just a group of Methodist schools, much like LaGrange, from all over the country. Uh, we have a house in Stanton Park, which is three or four blocks behind the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. in the historic Capitol Hill neighborhood. There were 27 of us in this class. You know, you also have to take classes. I had a class on Wednesday night uh, taught by a guy who's a senior intelligence analyst at the CIA. That was a really cool experience. After the one hour class on Friday morning, we would go out and pretty much on a field trip. Um, some of our field trips, like we got to go to Arlington for free. We got to go to Thomas Jefferson's Monticello in Charlottesville, Virginia for free. We got to go to Mount Vernon, which is George Washington's old home for free. Pretty much you just get the full Washington, D.C. experience. Sojourners. Sojourners is an evangelical nonprofit political advocacy organization and it's also a magazine. It was started by Reverend Jim Wallace in the, in the 1960s, um, kind of a spillover from the, from the human rights movement. Um, I work primarily in immigration and climate care. Um, I got to go to New York uh, for the second presidential debate uh, with a group called Young Evangelicals for Climate Action. We spoke at the protests and and, and sing hymns and, and just talk to other people about, about climate action, hoping that, you know, maybe we could have an effect. Um, not so much that night, but, you know, it, it was kind of a sweet moment when Barack Obama really talked about climate, you know, climate change in, in his inaugural address, because it does seem like progress to be made on that front. I did a lot of the social media stuff for, for immigration reform, so it was also, you know, kind of sweet to see that, you know, that, that's, that's become a, something that, that Congress is working on. Um, we made a DVD back in the fall called The Line, which is an amazing DVD about, about poverty in America and how the poverty line's gotten to the worst point since the 1960s. And um, uh, one of the coolest experiences I had while I was up there was we got to go to the Capitol and uh, deliver a copy to every, every member of the Senate, every member of the House of Representatives, which was really, really cool. Just getting to walk around in there and you know going into different offices um, and, and hoping that you know our work's making a difference. 
See, I just, I just feel like as, as, as Christians, we have a responsibility to look out for the least of these, like Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 25, which is always, that was kind of my passage of the Bible that really brought me as into Christianity full force and passionately. And so, I mean, I just, I just want to follow the example of those who, who have helped, you know, bring me up and bring me to where I am and, you know, just place, place others over self and, you know, use my advantages and my blessings to help people. More than ever, LaGrange College is attracting young men and women who want to be both challenged and inspired. Teresa Thompson earned her business administration degree from LaGrange College's Evening College and looks forward to getting her master's in public administration. I knew education was important, but at the time also taking care of my family um, sort of overrode the whole kind of getting the education. So I stopped and started, and stopped and started. Um, I decided to go to a couple of career uh, events that were happening here locally. And the Chamber of Commerce and True County Works was sponsoring an event um, on how to get back um, into the workforce, uh, dressing for success, things of that nature. Um, I didn't realize that LaGrange College, Evening College, would be there. And I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll come for the tour. And immediately, I parked in the parking lot across the street, walked across the bridge, and when I got on campus, the tears began to fall. I knew immediately this was where I was supposed to be. It was an amazing feeling, and I cried through the whole tour. She was like, we need to stop and get you some tissue. I was like, you just don't understand that this right here is the opportunity of a lifetime for me. Um, I had no idea um, that Evening College existed, number one, and number two, when I got here, the connectedness, the, the feeling of this is it for me, the, the ability to be able to get a degree, uh, the first in my family, no mom, grandmother, uncles, nobody has ever had a college degree. I would be the first person. A lot riding on my shoulders. Plus the kids, you know, be an example for them. You hear that it's an expensive place to come. But you pay for what you get. Um, I received financial aid. I had a financial aid package, and I didn't think I was going to get that, but I did. I uh, had grants. I had loans. Um, I had um, uh, United Methodist scholarship money that came in as well uh, for me to be able to afford this degree, but it was so worth it. It was so worth it. It didn't matter. For me, it didn't matter the cost. I mean, it did, but it didn't because I had to be here. Teresa, and it was worth it because in the end I have a degree and be able to get a job or, or own my own business and be able to uh, pay back, but it's so worth it. Felipe Vega graduated with a double major in accounting and business and is employed as a financial reporting accountant with Chick-fil-A Inc. To wrap up this episode of LaGrange College Presents, we ask Felipe to share the story of how he arrived at LC, the sacrifice, and the ultimate victory that he experienced during his four years here. In 2008, uh, I graduated from high school in South Georgia, and I came here to play football. I was recruited to play here, and after my freshman year, I received news after I took my last English final that my stepdad had gotten laid off his job. It was very hard on us because I didn't know if I was going to be able to come back. Um, I was able to work hard enough during the summer to think that I was going to be able to come back and I started football camp. But the day before classes started, I got a phone call saying that I wasn't going to be able to start school. I still owed too much money. I had to end up going back home and working at a grocery store where I used to work at before. It was very challenging because people looked at me as if you failed. You, you know, you, you messed up, got kicked off the football team, then you fell out of your classes. What happened? The Gazetta Foundation was able to offer me a scholarship. That was the difference between me being able to graduate from LaGrange College and me not being able to attend LaGrange College. I've been president of two honor societies, Omicron Delta Kappa and Delta Mu Delta. I've also been able to be a part of my fraternity, a fraternity Alpha Delta Gamma. I've been able to uh, serve under uh, Student Government Association as a treasurer. I played football for the football team. Um, I've also been able to be active in the 
uh, service uh, opportunities have been here. I've been some work with on uh, Habitat for Humanity and things like that. After the football season of my junior year, I ended up applying to Chick-fil-A. And, you know, from the get-go, I could see that things were good there. I could see this is what I want to be a part of. I was excited. Uh, after obtaining my accounting degree and my business degree, uh, I was able to work up high enough to be considered for an app for application, of course being considered for an interview. And at the interviewing process is very rigorous, very rigorous. Very few people get selected because they're very, uh, you know, they have that opportunity to be selected because, you know, it's such a great company. But uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to land a job. And I remember I was just so filled with joy. I tried to keep it together, you know, the, you know, the secretary was walking me out of the door and it was raining, it was pouring rain outside. And I told her, I don't need an umbrella, you can keep that. The sun's, you know, it's not gonna rain on me, I'm full of sunshine right now. I walked to my car and I just started yelling at my mom. I called her, I said, like, me contrataron, me contrataron, me contrataron, which means they offered me a contract, they offered me a job. And it was just the epitome of my five years in college. So many times I didn't know if I was gonna be graduating. So many times I didn't know where my life was gonna be headed. And knowing that at that point, I had made it. At that point, all of my hard work had paid off. All of her sacrifices, all of my sacrifices, all of the crying that she did in 2009 when I had to come back home, all that was worth it. My actual title there is I'm a, a restaurant financial reporting accountant. What that means is that I'm able to take the money that's made from each store and I'm able to see how much Chick-fil-A gets to keep and how much the owner gets to keep. Uh, it's really great because I get to talk to the owners and I really love the restaurant owners because I still talk to them about operations, the thing that I did for two and a half years. So it's very exciting for me. You know, I have 60 operators that I serve and I'm very good friends with. When I first started applying to the Grange College, I love the headline that says, you know, challenge the mind, inspire the soul. And I really loved it. And my mom loved it and we talked about it and said, that's really what I wanted to do. I want to go somewhere where I can be academic, academically challenged and also be inspired by what goes on and really find myself. And I feel like in, through my time in the Grange College, I really have been able to do that. I've been challenged academically immensely. I've been able to learn so much, so much about the world, so much about my profession and everything. I've been inspired, I've been able to find myself spiritually, I've been able to be involved in different religious groups and have spiritual mentors that really help guide me into the man that I am. And the third thing which they added watch, since I've been here was transform your life. I remember when I first stepped foot on campus, Alvin Lingerfelt, who was my cornerstone teacher, he challenged us, go listen to people to tell you don't change when you go to college, change, transform, be into something better. And it's really helped transform me. And you know, I have the peace of mind of knowing that I'm definitely not an isolated incident. It's not just me. I look around at my graduating class, I look at the people who I graduated with, and I see people who came in and are coming out of here completely different. They were challenged, they were inspired, and they were really transformed into working people that be able to contribute into society. And it's been really great. When you were a little boy, I held your hand. I guided you and protected you as best I could. But it's time for me to let go now. And there's some pain in that. When you were a little boy, I dreamed that your college graduation day would be bright and sunny. But now that it's here, no rain can wash away the pride that we feel today. As I watch you march into Callaway Auditorium, a LaGrange College student for the last time, I'm remembering the birthday parties, the family outings, the crazy times, the baseball games. I want to stand up right here, right now, and yell, the future stands bright before you take hold of your dreams and don't let go. But I hope you've heard my heart say that already, millions of times, in millions of ways. There will be times ahead when you feel overwhelmed. I wish I could protect you from them, but I can't. Not anymore. Just try not to give up because nothing worth anything comes without hard work and sacrifice. On this rainy graduation day, it's time for me to let go. And there is some pain in that. Still, there is also a wonderful sense of pride and accomplishment as I look at the young man that you have become. 
I love you, son, and I pray that my love will sustain you. <laughs>